I meet on a regular basis with people who are in their late 50s, early 60s, and they literally have nothing saved for retirement. And, uh, you know, because there's many different ways to save for retirement. You can, you can save, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever you want on a monthly basis, and that's mm-hmm. called wealth accumulation. I've adopted a principle called wealth acceleration, which means that no matter what you have earned in 30, 40, 50 years, through entrepreneurship, I've been able to accelerate wealth because business allows me to control my income, to control my, later on, to control your time and efforts into things that return you revenue, money, for the time invested you have. That's the beauty of capitalism. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship. That's the beauty of taking a risk because things may not work out, but when it does, man, it's a beautiful thing. And um, so a new survey, let's take a look at this article here uh, when you get ready, uh, um, Jordan. Many older Americans haven't saved anything for retirement. A new survey finds 27% of people age 59 and older have no money set aside for their later years. So let's create some solutions. Let's create some, let's, let's ideate some solutions. So I do workshops twice a week at our office right here in Carrollton. We have offices in Chicago. They do it twice a week. We have three offices up there in, in Chicago. We have multiple offices in Carrollton, Maryland. We have multiple offices in Memphis, Tennessee, multiple offices in Orlando, Jack, uh, Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, New, uh, New York, Freeport, um, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, I, I can go on and on and on. We have multiple offices. So I am boots to the ground when it comes to this stuff about what's going on with retirement because everybody wants to retire sooner than later. And this being Financial Literacy Month, but and the fact is that 21% of people want to plan for retirement, but they don't, they don't understand how to plan for retirement. They want to retire early, but they don't know how to plan for retirement. I don't get it. So, so there's a there's massive despair there. So, so 79% of people are just winging it. 21% have actually have some form of solution. So when, when, you're, when you're looking at, you know, when you're looking at, you know, 70, 80% of people have some form of winging it mentality, 20, 30% are just, are, are just solid. They understand where they're going. So typical way to save for retirement, 10% of your income, 20% of your income, 30% of your income, but this predicated on what? It's based on income. Yeah. So if you don't like the 10 or 20, 30%, for example, we run across people all the time. I want to be a millionaire. What can you tuck away on a monthly basis? 150 bucks a month. Bro, how old are you? 30. You're not going to get anywhere close to a million by talking away 150 bucks yeah. a month, maybe 1,500 a month, yep. or 2,500 a month. But and then the expectation, like, well, and that's why everybody gets caught up next time a new crypto craze, or Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, uh, craze, or something soaps, potions, and lotions you can sell, which probably has some solid business models behind it, but it's not going to happen in the next six, 12, 18, 24 months. And people are trying to swing for the fences, and that's how they get caught up because. They lose the fundamental of basic financial literacy. Which is number one, if you don't like the income that you're making or the percentage of money that you're saving, you got to increase one thing. Not the savings rate, but you got to increase your, your income. Like, for example, you found that out a couple of days. My, you know, uh, my, my mentor, your, 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 uh, your, um, your client that you do massages with when mm-hmm. we have events. Patrick. You, Patrick, but David. Yeah. He announced that Tom Brady is coming to the vault. A conference in September. Yeah. Okay. Exciting times, right? One thousand percent. I got a text from you right away. Yeah. Seriously, bro. Bro, maybe I need to buy a ticket. Yeah. Bro, that's a ten thousand dollar ticket. Yeah. The four year younger version than you working at the gym as a trainer working for somebody. Would you be having that conversation with me? Wouldn't even be able to afford general admission right away. You're canceling it out. Yeah. Why? Just can't afford it. Exactly. Can't afford it. So most people look at decisions in their life based on can I afford it or not. Now the wealth acceleration mentality says, how can I afford it? 1,000%. And so if you're looking at ways to get ahead financially, it's not what I can't do. You have to figure out what you can do. And so speaking of what they can do, let's take another look at this mm-hmm. article. So, so where are people getting their financial guidance? Where are people getting their financial, financial future predicted? Is it their own efforts? No. Young people are most likely to consult. <laughs> Fortune tellers crystal ball, as financial baby. experts and are more familiar with Elon Musk's net worth than their own families. People are turning to search engines like Google mm-hmm. or TikTok yeah. or social media mm-hmm. for financial advice. And 50% of millennials are relying on them. And by the way, if there's a reason why we're doing a podcast, this is why. That's exactly why, baby. We don't want you to turn into fortune tellers. And by the way, we're a bunch of guys here on this podcast that aren't just talkers of making a million bucks. We're helping people make a million bucks. I've made seven figures in my life. I've been a, a multimillionaire since mid-30s. 
And that's after I filed bankruptcy. That's after I filed be- uh, a divorce. That's be- when I was a single father of three kids. Entrepreneurship, capitalism, free enterprise. I'll forever say this. The insurance industry has saved my financial life. And because of my pursuit of my financial life and to improve it, guess what it led me to? My faith life. It's the weirdest thing. People think it's the opposite. I, I can't tell you, man, bro, I, I went to church and said, I need to get my finance together. No, I went to get my finance together. I said, you know what? I can't bring this stuff on my own. God, no where shit. are you? Bro, that was, that was my... That was a, lot my of, a lot of people have the, the notion of I need to go to church first and then I'll get my financial life ready. And then they go to one of those churches that say that uh, people who are too dug in to try and get their finances, uh, their, their finances together... Are, is the wrong doctrine to even be oh preaching? Oh my gosh! What do they call it? The uh, prosperity gospel? What, what do they call it? The, uh, well, the uh, well, the, what's the opposite of prosperity gospel? You know, the, the broke the broke model. I don't yeah. know. It's it's uh, it, it's uh, was Jesus was meek. You know, they yeah. try they try to sell you that it's it's easier yeah. for a rich man to go through an eye of a needle than than than, uh, than a, a rich man going to heaven. And people completely missed the point of that. Completely missed the point of the entire uh, uh, parable. But one one of the things, uh, Matt, that I that I've noticed about these younger people especially these, the younger generation, the Gen Zs and the young millennials, a lot of these people have either gotten it very easy or haven't been going through a major struggle like a lot of these older people have gone through or the older uh, millennials. People aren't at ease with the potential outcome of what their future looks like. For example, the people who are right now in their 60s, 70s with zero retirement. Mm-hmm. I have family, family members who are in their 50s, very close family members who are still working and have no idea what the next 20 years of their lives are going to look like. Yep. And when they retire... Yep. It's their children who are my age that are going to be taking care of them because they have no financial uh, structure on what the next step is for them. And, and the challenge with that yeah. is by the time that happens, I mean, let me ask you a question. In the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you think you'll be married? I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. Would, so. would you would yeah. have kids? 1,000%. Will you probably have those kids in activities? Yeah, 1,000%. Do you want to travel the world with your wife? 1,000%. Will you want to uh, um, invest in other businesses? For sure. So in other words, in your pursuit of increasing your endeavors, yeah. Now somebody, you know, a parent or relative, now needs to yeah. lean on you. Yeah, that's the ch- that's the challenge. Yeah. And now you have to have choice. Do I take care of the people I love and care about, or do I expand my stuff? One thousand percent. So you know, you want to be able to do both. Correct. And you know, so you know, for for example, I I put in my post it on IG. I've taken care of my wife. I've taken care of my kids. My kids are in private school. My wife is never ever working for another man ever again. My wife would never have another paycheck uh, stamped with another signature on that check outside of her husband. Mm. So my, my wife done that. She's not taking a check for no other man, but her husband. We're working together in business. My mom and dad are retired. My in-laws are retired. My mother is my, my, my mother in laws asking me how to work the TV at the house. I don't know how to work the TV at the mm-hmm. house. Matt, how you do it? What's your log? What's your, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in the house. Matt, yeah, how many TVs you got in this house? My nanny goes, 12. You don't know how to work any of these TVs? I'm like, mom, I don't know. She, because my mother's a my mother in law's a, a sports freak. She yeah. loves watching her sports. I don't know how to work the TV at the house. I don't know how to work the damn. You know, you've been to my house. Yeah. I've got a whole media room. I got I don't know how to work this stuff. Do you know why? Because I'm busy right now with the prime in my life to expand this endeavor, this this wealth acceleration that God has bestowed in my life, and to make the best of it. I don't have time watching the next series. I don't have time for that type of stuff. You would agree for at least for the younger people watching this, even the older folks. That the best thing you can possibly do is find a vehicle that you find true purpose in. Utilize that vehicle. Find ways to be able to monetize that specific vehicle. Or you just say, screw that. Screw what you find purpose in. And go into a vehicle that you know produces the monetary you know, outcome that you're looking for. I got involved in the insurance business completely by accident without any intention to do anything well with it or with the intention to find my purpose in it. Mm. I had one responsibility, to be a provider and be a protector. I'm a single father of three kids. I need to provide. I need to protect my kids from, from poverty, from shame, from WIC, from food stamps, from Section 8. I don't want, I don't want to depend on the government for nothing because, to me, that was a pride thing. Yeah. And uh, I remember, that being said, I took WIC for 30 days. I'm here I am at Albertsons on Red Hill. On Red Hill and, uh, you know, for those of you in, in Orange County, right there on, on Red Hill and uh, what is that, Edinger, the Albertsons right there or right before you hit the freeway on, on I-5. And people behind me are huffing and puffing because I'm taking t- too long to go through my WIC stamps for cheese, cereal, milk, eggs. And, and I'm, like, embarrassed. And here I am, a sergeant in the Marines on WIC. I'm like, this will never happen again. As soon as the 30 days went, do you want to renew? No, I'm not waiting in line anymore. I'm going to find out how to make more money on my own. I want to be able to go in there with freedom. Boom. That's it. Done. But that was me. That's the way I was wired. Um, I just didn't want it to be dependent on anybody. I didn't want my mother to be dependent on government. 
I wanted my mother to be dependent on me. And if my mother is dependent on me, my father is dependent on me, I have the financial resources, time, disposition to take, to take care of them. Much the same way you want to take care of your mom. Yeah. But I'd never be able to do that by hoping somebody gives me a pay raise uh, once a year. So if you, by the way, if you are in a job, God bless you. But you just can't think that that job is the only end-all be-all for you to be financially independent. Work something on the side. You worked your business on the side. Probably one of the best things that happened to you, Milton, was what? The pandemic. Exactly. It forced me to level up. Completely forced me, man. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.